No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Hello. Uh, it's hello. 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 Hello there. Our story begins with Papa Palpatine inside of his executive office. He looked up and watched Anakin walk out of the room. Palpatine tilted his head over and leaned his chair to the side to make sure Anakin fully left the room. He turned down to his desk and pressed a button and closed his eyes. A wave of electronic bass and drums played out all over the room. That was more like it. Palpatine just needed to come back down from where he was. After all, he was almost killed by Windu. He needed a chance to mentally recover from that. He took a deep breath and allowed the darkness to wash over him. He smiled and listened to the beat. Naturally, he stood up and started to let the sound waves wash over him. The war would be over soon. He would have his galactic empire even sooner, and that was something to be excited about. Why wouldn't he be ecstatic? Palpatine walked around the room looking for something. He couldn't remember what the executive orders were. That was a bit of an annoyance, but he would find the secrets he was looking for. Palpatine stepped on glass and felt it shatter under his shoes. He turned his head over and looked out the window and felt a brush of wind hit his face. This was a sweet relief of victory. He walked past the window and into the other room, shuffling past the duel he had just survived. He turned down the corridor and walked to the console at the end of the room. As he did, he walked over the bodies and turned the console on transferring a bundle of data to his personal tablet so he didn't have to read it from this particular room. The aliens in the room would surely be stinking up the place in a matter of minutes, so no need to stay around and bask in the ungodly odor. Palpatine stepped over Fisto's tentacles and turned back. He could have sworn they weren't there before, but whatever. Palpatine hummed a melody in his mind as the bass and drums became more audible when he walked back into the room. He moved to his desk and sat down behind it, grabbing the tablet and putting his reading glasses on. He was having a hard time seeing as it was, but it wasn't helping that he was playing with electricity for a couple minutes beforehand. His finger traced along the executive orders on the list and he found the one, Executive Order 65.5. What a weird number to choose. He didn't really understand why they wouldn't just use a number without a decimal point, but Palpatine never interacted with his long-necked scientists, so he wasn't going to complain if they're being a little fishy with their numbering choices. Ah, fishy because they live on a water planet? Yeah, that didn't land. No, the menu with the red lobster. He prepared the first on the list and began speaking out the order to every clone commander across the galaxy. Each of them were receiving not just the order of 65.5, but they were receiving something else. Palpatine had no clue. All he knew is his empire would grow. The Dark Lord got up and walked around the edge of his desk and looked over the room before turning up the sound on his speakers and letting the music control him in a devious dance of the ages. It didn't get much better than this. He was able to partake in the fall of the Jedi, something no Sith had been able to accomplish on such a scale like this. As he was moving around in his dance of the ages, Commander Fox came running into the room. He was very confused and concerned, and then he saw Palpatine doing his thing. So naturally, Fox very carefully and quietly backed out of the room and snuck away as if he didn't see anything. Across the city, Anakin landed right in front of the Jedi Temple and got out of his starfighter. He looked over to his men, and they were standing in formation, but something felt off. Regardless of that weird feeling, he walked over to Commander Apo and told him, to ready the men. But when he said it, not a word was said back to him. Anakin had already turned around and began to march, but the lack of communication threw him off. Appa was much more vocal to orders than Rex was. This instantly brought Anakin back to that weird feeling he had, and when he turned around, Appa was staring at him blankly. It was like he was a zombie. He didn't move and his body looked still. It was like he was hypnotized or dead. It didn't make a ton of sense. Skywalker asked Appa what he was doing and the clone still didn't move. Anakin was starting to get worried, so he creeped forward a little bit with his hand on his lightsaber. As Appa tilted his head, it made Anakin jump a little due to how sudden it was. Anakin sighed and asked what that was about. And without missing a beat, Appa grabbed Anakin's hand and told him a full commitment's what I'm thinking of. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. Anakin's eyes were wider than a star as he tried to pull back. But then the rest of the clones slammed their first foot forward as, in one fluid motion, the sound of a rick roll broke from their inner helmet comlinks and blasted Anakin with electric music, solid waves of sound. Appa's grip wasn't enough to hold him to the ground as he was thrown off of his feet. 
When he got back up, he demanded that they stop the noise. But like a horde from Thriller, they move with a synchronized movement, one that matched the beat of the rhythm and echoed out with the angelic voice of Rick Astley. He had never heard something so magnificent as he stumbled over his feet as he rushed away from the steps of the Jedi Temple. It was like a nightmare. No matter how fast he moved, he couldn't get there. The Jedi had since forgotten how to use force speed anyways. That played a big part in him not being able to escape. Anakin kept tripping over his own feet. To him, it felt like he was treading sand in clown shoes. Every time he looked back, all he saw was a blank expression on Appa's face as he marched and chased him down. It was truly nightmarish, but remarkable at the same time. Anakin tried to use his comms to contact Palpatine, but the second he turned it on, he was blasted in the face with and he couldn't escape it. Anakin tried to move away from the clones, but they continued chasing him. Across the galaxy, Obi-Wan was driving his Komodo dragon up the side of a cliff, and he reached the top, and then he realized the battle had fallen silent. How odd. Perhaps it was a rout, but not even Cody could have routed the Separatists that quickly. Obi-Wan's dragon crawled around the corner of the face of the cliff, and then stopped. As they came around, they saw what could only be described as pure cinema. We're no strangers to love. <laughs> The clones were with Cody, somehow, and they were performing something Obi-Wan had never heard before. I mean, how could he have never heard it? Cody was leading the movement, similar to how Oppo had on Coruscant. The clone commander turned to see Obi-Wan, and he was overjoyed. He could finally share such a remarkable moment with his Jedi General and his best friend. Was there a better combination than this? No. Cody waved Obi-Wan his way, and instead of going towards whatever was happening, Kenobi's lizard took off. And instead of going towards whatever was happening, Kenobi's lizard took off. Obi-Wan simply had to hold on for dear life as his dragon went out of its way to avoid this monstrosity. Back on Coruscant, Fox was trying to formulate a plan of how he could get Palpatine's attention. Because every time he went back to the office, Palpatine was doing his old man jig, and honestly, it was an eyesore. Out of all the things Papa Palpatine was good at, this was not one of them. He was doing a combination of line dancing and the electric slide, without a group of people and without the proper technique to look like he was actually having fun. It was like he was moving and not moving. There was no way to describe it, he was just kind of gliding. Fox and the clones did receive the order, but they were able to resist the temptation of Rick Astley. They turned off the communication devices from the ground despite Commander Appa leaving him an additional 20 reminders that it was time to live it up. Fox was truthfully not having the time of his life and his men felt cornered, because Palpatine likely wasn't done. Fox wasn't trying to arrest him or anything, he was mostly trying to inform him that he had gone a little too far because reports were coming in galaxy-wide that the clones had taken Rick Astley and used it to level cities and buildings. Once you base boost from an ATTE, it's game over for any galactic infrastructure. Where is the baby? <laughs> Fox never understood why the Kaminoans base boosted the walkers in their planning, but now it made sense. It was a torturous array of electric waves of solid sound. Fox and his men could still see Palpatine from the corner of the office. It was like a little sliver of the wall and door hinge that was visible from their location. As Fox was preparing to make his move, one of the captains from a venator above contacted him. Fox had the take to make sure that the Separatists didn't come back to the planet. When he opened the communication, he wished he hadn't. Not yourself. For five minutes! The response was very drastic as he ripped his helmet off, slammed it into the wall, and then tore off his wrist comm link and stomped on it. He didn't just stomp on it, he jumped on it like an angry toddler, which is exactly what Palpatine saw when he came out of his room to see what was going on. Uh, he's just standing there, menacingly! Fox's jaw dropped and he moved to stand at attention. Palpatine hadn't ever been so confused, especially since he didn't realize the clones could have seen him dancing. At the moment, he was playing it off as if he didn't do that, but he just stood with a blank expression. He finally found the words to say, and he asked Fox what he was doing. The clone commander stepped back and said that there was a song, and the clones were getting it, and truthfully, it was doing his head in. Palpatine's face went pale. Fox told him that they all received some sort of song, there wasn't really any order. It was a hologram of some dude singing a song. Palpatine looked at Fox and then turned around and rushed back to his desk. Fox and the clones turned to each other and tried to figure out what was going on with the Chancellor. Also, why did he look like a moldy raisin? That was probably the weirdest part about the entire thing. He didn't look like himself. Perhaps something happened? 
Palpatine grabbed his tablet, but as he tried to open it, it didn't recognize his face. Ironically, this wasn't because of the crumpled look. It was actually entirely because he was in a rush, and his tablet knew that, so it locked him out. So he had to type out his entire password. And because Palpatine is pretentious, he didn't use numbers and had to type it all in. In all caps. Best Sith Lord, 19 BBY. Yeah, he was the best, but this would be the all-time mix-up. He scoured the orders and looked at Order 65.5 again. It said kill all the Jedi again. What was he missing? Oh, wait. No, he was just reading it wrong. He must have been so excited that he didn't realize he mixed it up. Palpatine put the tablet back down and spoke aloud to himself and said that he could make this right. And as he prepared his hologram, he got a notification on his tablet. Uh, uh, uh. No problem. Oh, come on, the Kaminoans required a strict password to access and use the full membership of the Executive Order plan. Palpatine only paid for the single membership because he only needed one order at a time. Palpatine called out the Kaminoans and was immediately put in touch with the Prime Minister, who told him that they could do it, but they needed him to pay for the full membership. Lamasu did say that it came with an extra package of Topoka City merch just in case he wanted it. Lama asked what size Palpatine wanted for his t-shirt. Sheev yelled at the phone and Lamasu told him Daddy, chill. that that wasn't going to get this done any faster. They were working diligently, but he needed his long-necked accountants to process everything for old Sheev. Palpatine rolled his eyes and told Lama Su that he liked large t-shirts. He heard Lama Su let out a little, ah, alrighty then. What was that supposed to mean? Lama Su told Palpatine that the payment was denied, apologizing, but they couldn't upgrade him to the premium program. Palpatine asked why, and he was told that the card expired years ago. Also, his name wasn't the one on it. The account belonged to Tyrannus, so there was nothing he could actually do. Palpatine told him that he would pay the fee in Lama Su's side, and asked for the card number. When he gave it, he was also denied. Lama Su told Palpatine to stop wasting his time and hung up. Palpatine was livid. Clearly, there was something wrong with his bank. So, he called up the Coruscant Bank of Elitist and waited, and waited, and waited, and waited. Across the city, Anakin was ducking in and out of alleyways as his boys in blue continued hunting him down. He couldn't escape. It was a terrible thing, and the song, oh, it didn't end. No matter how far away he got, they kept finding him. Anakin just wanted to get the song out of his head. He sometimes would get tackled and would have to wiggle away from the rolling of Rick. But as he continued, he got tripped by a bystander and when Anakin looked up, the guy couldn't be happier. <laughs> Anakin was puzzled by the expression and then a clone pile drived him. <laughs> and the swarm finally caught him. Palpatine, on the other hand, was still waiting. By this point, the Coruscant guard was sitting in his office and awaiting their next orders. Palpatine was leaning away from them and waving his hand in their direction, gesturing that they go away and leave him be while he was on his important phone call. And then we'll get all cool and you'll be all like, whoa, and then we'll be all like, in your face, <laughs> and then I'll be all like, get back to work! But they didn't as they waited to see what would happen next. Palpatine started to get more and more frustrated because there was nothing coming from this. The automated machines continued dragging him on and on and on throughout the entire process until he had one little slip up and had to start all the way over from the very beginning. Flexibility with me and reach your full potential in just under 10 days. Why is his head all tilted like that? On a venator far from Coruscant, Cal Kestis was confused because the clones were acting different. But Jara lived through the 80s. He knew what this meant and he feared it, telling Kestis to run, but he didn't. Cal was lured in by the hypnotic intro. Something about his tune felt so familiar and yet he couldn't figure out why that was. He just wanted to know what was happening. This song pulled him in and he wanted to hear the entire thing, and as Jero was trying to keep the clones at bay, his little Padawan waltzed over to the clones so he could get a taste of a song that they were playing. No Joker, no. Jero panicked, but it was too late. Cal turned around and told his master that he wouldn't ever give him up or let him down. He wouldn't run around and desert him. T'Pol just crumbled to his knees and the clones got him too. He was under the influence of Rick Astley. Meanwhile on Keta Nemodia, Plo Koon was trying to escape the sound of the song. It was seeping through his ears and he tried evading his troopers, but there was no way to do that. Plo spun his ship around in circles to try and escape the sound, but he very quickly realized that it wasn't worth it. As he was spinning, he could see that a battle with the bands was beginning.
that he would not survive the outcome. And so naturally, Plo took what could only be described as the honorable way out of a terrible predicament. <laughs> On Coruscant, Palpatine fell to his knees. He realized that there was no escaping the pool of the Atsli, and then Commander Fox asked what he was listening to. Palpatine said it was a smooth drum and bass collection. Fox's jaw dropped, and then he turned the song on and played the Order 65.5 he was given earlier side by side. Palpatine and Fox looked at each other before down to the tablet where the bass and drums played from with the actual song. It was Rickception. And that, my friends, is whatever... I, I don't even know. Anyways, bye bye